So it turns out that two minutes before Thomas Crooks fired at Donald Trump, the Secret Service command centre was notified about a suspect on the roof. Yet they left Donald Trump on the stage. Two whole minutes. And I think this guy here, the acting Secret Service director, Ronald Rowe, I think he might have perjured himself lying about it. Okay, so I'm just going to show a section here from this hearing. To be fair, he's, he's answering a question about when police officers saw crooks with a gun on the roof 30 seconds beforehand and whether or not he got that information. And he says no, and I, I don't know whether that's true, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about him knowing about someone, gun or no gun, we don't know about a gun, but someone was on the roof. Secret Service Command Center was notified two minutes beforehand. But listen to this. He says they didn't know about that. Um, it, it is troubling to me that we did not get that information as quickly as we should have. Uh, we didn't know that there was this incident going on. Uh, and the only thing we had was that locals were working an issue at the three o'clock, which would have been the former president's right hand side, which is where the shot came. Nothing about man on the roof, nothing about man with a gun. None of that information. Nothing about man on the roof. Nothing. Nothing about man on the roof. That's wrong. And I can understand why they want to uh, not admit that because they basically have blood on their hands. They should have pulled Trump off the stage straight away. This is on top of the fact that they were already aware of a suspicious person with a rangefinder that the police were searching for. He was on the loose somewhere. They knew about this before they sent Trump out on stage. That's outrageous enough. And then on top of that, once he's on stage, they get updated, hey, he's on the roof. Well, you know, it's maybe not, maybe they weren't sure exactly who it was, but, you, you know, you'd assume it probably could be. Someone's on the roof and they do respond, and we'll go through it here, they do turn one of their snipers around to face the threat. But they leave Trump exposed to the threat for two whole minutes for him to get shot at, before he gets shot at, I should say. Um, so look, let's go back about an hour before and we'll show these two snipers, okay? So you've got snipers to the left and right of Trump. Okay, these, some faces are facing to the north. You've got to check out this video too. Check it out on my Watchdog Media channel or on Twitter at Chris Todd Nolan. Check my highlights section and watch this video in full. I'm not going to go through all the stuff in here. Um, but yeah, this is about an hour before the shooting. And so yeah, those Hercules 2 Secret Service snipers, they're already facing to the north. But I think they have this tree that sort of obscures the view. These snipers, as far as I know, didn't fire any shots at all. Probably because of that tree. The kill shot apparently came from these other snipers facing to the south. Okay, so these are the north facing ones. They didn't fire a shot. These guys. Alright, and then... Mm. Okay, so these are the other snipers. So the stage is set and some big names are starting to arrive in Milwaukee with... Okay, here they are. So here's Hercules 1. They're facing to the south. Alright. After Secret Service gets notified of a threat on the roof over here, these guys change direction to face the threat. Okay. As I said, check out this video. It's, it's pretty good. <laughs> okay, so we're going to skip ahead about an hour now. So this is about three minutes before the shooting, okay? 6.08 before we're at, what, 5, 5.09, okay? We're at 6.08 p.m. And we hear over the police radio. That's your senator. He votes with Biden or whoever happens to be furthest left. left. We got to get him a left. Yeah, There's another video you got to check out too. There's probably more so than the other one, okay? Because I've synchronized all the footage in the last three minutes and all the chaos is going on there and it's I'm not even going to attempt to explain it here because there's just too much going on but we're just going to focus on two things from this video one was this police transmission someone's on the roof he's a good man too he's a he's a valiant someone fighter on the roof white shorts okay so there's a CNN article here about this okay a local law enforcement officer reported over the radio someone's on the roof I have someone on the roof with white shorts a butler supervisor then passed the information to the Secret Service command post at 6.09, according to the transcript obtained by the post. 6.09, that's two minutes before the shooting. 
Then it says here, the Hercules snipers covering Trump from above and behind the stage then turn to face the AGR property to the north. And you can see that on this video as well. If you skip ahead. So, so they got the message at 6.09 sometime. Not sure the exact second or whatever. But then soon after that, you see those snipers turn around, the south-facing snipers. I should have made this bigger. They're in the, the bottom left here. Okay. So look in the bottom left, south, Secret Service counter snipers. See them turning around. Okay, 609, 610. They've got the message. There's a shooter on the roof in the other direction, so turn around. Yet they leave Trump on there. You actually see him, as I said, lots going on in this video. I won't get into it all, all around there for a long time about it. Main point here is, at 6.08, they got the, over the radio, someone's on the roof. At 6.09, that gets sent to the Secret Service command post. And 6.09, 6.10, those snipers turn around to face them. Yet they leave Trump on the stage talking. For two whole minutes, they've got a call about a threat on the roof over here that you can see. They leave Trump on stage. Okay. Now, I wanted to check the source because it mentions according to the transcript obtained by the Post. And, you know, I think it's pr proper to go to the direct source and not look at it secondhand. Oh, where am I? I thought I had this lined up. Was about. Anyway, but it's not as clear here. See how clear it is on the CNN one. Okay. A butler supervisor then passed the information to the Secret Service command post at 6.09 p.m. Look how the yeah, Washington Post writes that. At 6.09, Lenz again dialed the state trooper to inform him about the suspect on the roof, according to the local, uh, law enforcement official and call logs. Now, that mightn't be clear uh, that he's calling the Secret Service command post, but he is. I guess I'll, you have to go through the whole article to work that out. But it's just, I, I think it's worth mentioning how this should be the headline, that the Secret Service command post was notified Yet it's sort of buried in this thing. It doesn't even really say it very clearly when it does. So as I said, I'll explain how that is the Secret Service command post. Okay, so we have the Butler County Command Center here, and this is where the Sergeant Lenz is that was just mentioned. He's there. The Secret Service um, command post is over here, and they have a State Police Sergeant Olea. He's there. Now, Lenz... When he wants to pass information to the Secret Service, he calls by a uh, cell phone to Sergeant Olea, who's in this post, and then he then tells the Secret Service people. He did that a couple of times. Um, where are we? Um, uh, why would it... Anyway. <laughs> I was going to say, why would it like go down to the bottom? Why not show me the first lens? Anyway. Okay, so Lenz, he's in that uh, Butler Command Center monitoring the radios. He's there with someone from the Butler County ESU. He has no comment. Okay, so he heard a message about a rangefinder. Okay, so... Besides... Where are we? Besides these two snipers that I mentioned before, there's ESU snipers over here. And they're in the building just next to where Crooks was. I've done a couple of videos on that. I'm going to do a few in future because they should have been able to see him. <laughs> my next video is going to be called the ESU cover-up. That's my working title. <clears throat> because everyone seems to be wanting to give them a pass and they just want to blame the Secret Service. Which, I mean, the Secret Service got a lot to answer for, as this video should show. But so do these guys. <clears throat> they were in these windows. They were, And the windows were open. There were people just outside the windows yelling, Someone's on the roof. Someone's on the roof. And they just what? I mean, there's been all kinds of excuses for why they didn't see him. But we'll save that for the next video. Point is here, before that happened, one of the snipers there at 5.14 took photos of Crooks. He was sitting on the ledge just here. Um, okay, and then he... So these are the photos he took at 5.14, but he didn't send them straight away. He only sent them after he came back with a rangefinder. That's when he sent them, with the message, uh, I did see him with a rangefinder looking towards the stage. Pretty suspicious, okay? So this message was passed on, or maybe not that exact message, but uh, this story about someone suspicious with a rangefinder that they've lost contact with and they're looking for. 
this was passed on. Okay, so this Sergeant Lenz heard about the rangefinder. He used his cell phone to call Olaya, state police officer, stationed in the secret police, <laughs> secret service trailer command center at 5.44. Then where are we? Okay, so then at 6.02, <clears throat> same sniper, Greg Nickel, ESU sniper. He was supposed to be here. Um, he went to the back. He saw Crooks here, apparently. He saw him heading this way. And for some reason, he passed on a message saying he was headed towards a gas station over here somewhere when there's no way out here. In fact, apparently, Crooks went this way to climb up onto the roof and he ran down here. Just a quick side note. <clears throat> Yeah, I mentioned the tree was obscuring the view. It looks like it was obscuring the entire path that he took. Okay, so if we look at all those snipers, Hercules 2 looking to the north, but the tree blocks that view. So he is sort of looking at that roof, but only 80% of it. This one's looking to the south. These ESU snipers, uh, they're supposed to be looking not, not at the roof, it doesn't look like, but just out. So the only sniper covering that roof had a tree blocking this section. And that was the section that Crooks happened to take a position in. And I think that tree blocked that whole run. He climbed up on the roof here, ran down here, I'm pretty sure. The whole time had the tree blocking his way. How lucky is that for Crooks? All right, anyway, little tangent. Don't worry about that too much. <laughs> That's for another video, maybe. <clears throat> when we start indulging in some crazy conspiracy theories. But for now, let's just stick to the facts. Um, so yeah, he thought this guy was um, heading off to the gas station, Sheets. Okay, so for the second time, Sergeant Lenz called the state trooper, the state, you know, Sergeant Olaya in the Secret Service command post. Okay. Called him again at 6.03 with an update on this guy with the rangefinder that the Secret Service didn't seem too concerned about, not enough to prevent Trump from going on the stage anyway. And then, what have we got here? Okay, then we sort of come back to um, the someone's on the roof that we heard at the start here. One more time, because it's kind of amazing. Three Biden minutes before, over the roof. Someone's, on the roof. someone's on the roof. I have someone on the roof with white shorts. And it mentions that video. I show that of you know McCormick. yeah because you can see him in the dash cam McCormick. climbing up here and then you can also see him can we in this fox video a running, running across All right, this is on a funny angle McCormick. so it looks like he's running sideways but I think he's running sort of straight the world will see a vibrant okay, so that's him there it mentions that okay so inside the butler command center sergeant lens radioed back the police officer to clarify that the person on the roof was not a police officer. We do not have assets on the roof. That is not us, was the reply. That's a big problem. Okay, we've got someone on the roof. Okay, we got a problem. So there we are, back to this with the context, because it wasn't clear in the sentence. you got to know this whole thing about Lens calling this other guy in the uh, Secret Service command post. Okay, at 6.09, Lenz again dialed the state trooper to inform him about the suspect on the roof, according to the law enfor uh, enforcement official and call logs. It's just, it's just not very clear, is it? I mean, that should be the headline. At 6.09, the Secret Service Command Center was notified about a suspect on the roof, and they left Trump on stage for another two minutes, and then the, the shooter fired, got, fired eight shots, hit Trump, killed Corey Comparator, and wounded two others because they left Trump on stage. One, because they brought Trump on stage in the first place, even though he had a sus suspicious person with a rangefinder range out there. And two, they left him on there once they were told the suspect on the roof, the suspect that they'd been updated about, suspicious with a rangefinder. I mean, I don't think they knew for sure that it was the same person, but, I mean, safe to assume, right? Definitely a threat. Big enough of a threat for them to turn those snipers around, but not big enough to take Trump off the stage. That's outrageous. And it's not clear here. And what's interesting, because when I first went to check this, I saw that sentence and I'm like, well, state trooper, is that, is that Secret Service? I mean, 
Where's the bit that CNN was talking about? Nice and clear. Pass on the information to the Secret Service command post. Dial the state trooper. What does that mean? So I ended up searching the Wayback Machine to see if maybe a previous article was more clear. And I found something surprising. Initially, <clears throat> the article said the opposite. He did not make a cell phone call to the Secret Service command post, the law enforcement official said. So it turns out they found out that wasn't true. So that's why they got rid of this article and they updated it and said that, well, actually, he did make a cell phone call to the Secret Service. Didn't change the headline or anything, didn't, you know. But what I find interesting, and maybe this I'm reading too much into this, but notice how when it was absolving the Secret Service, it's as clear as day. He did not make a cell phone call to the Secret Service command post. When they turns out that he did make that cell phone call, did they just change it to he then made a cell phone call to the Secret Service command post? Mm -mm. You saw it. They said Lenz again dialed the state trooper to inform him about the suspect on the roof. It doesn't quite have the same punch, does it? And fair enough, down the bottom here, they mentioned the correction. A previous version of this article incorrectly said that after a local officer saw crooks on the roof, Sergeant Lenz did not call a state trooper in the Secret Service command post. Lenz did call the trooper at that time. Okay. So Secret Service command post was called two minutes before. They turned this guy around. And let's not forget our friend here. What did he say? He knows nothing about a man on the roof, under oath. Um, it, it is troubling to me that we did not get that information as quickly as we should have. Uh, we didn't know that there was this incident going on, uh, and the only thing we had was that locals were working an issue at the 3 o'clock, which would have been the former president's right-hand side, which is where the shot came. Nothing about man on the roof, nothing about man with a gun, none is where the shot came. Nothing about man on the roof. Nothing about man with a gun. Nothing about man on the roof. What a load of shit. Now, apparently, perjury, he has to know that he's lying. He can't just be mistaken. But think about it. He's the acting director of the Secret Service. When was this? This is the end of July. Okay. This is a fair while after the shooting. He doesn't know this. I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, yeah, before I go... Uh, at first, I only knew where the Butler County Command Center was. So I was going to say, the Butler County Command Center is here. I don't know where the Secret Service Command Post is. I guess it's a secret. And I was almost annoyed when I found out where it was because I couldn't tell that joke properly. But I didn't want to let it go to waste, so here it is. Anyway, share this video. Watch these other two. Okay? this is. I'm going to connect all these videos. So this is from... Starts from five, and this is sort of at six. I'm going to put this all together. I'm going to do a two-hour timeline so you can just watch it all happen in real time. And I'll sort of I'll add in all the various um, police interactions that we have. So, yeah. So if uh, our two witnesses could please uh, uh, stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear that the testimony you will give before this committee will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Thank you. You may be seated. Nothing about man on the roof, nothing about man with a gun, none of that information ever made it over our net. 